So Ubisoft have dropped a new Star Wars game set in an old familiar universe, but giving you a massive open world to explore. Now, I've played the game for about 10 hours now, and I'm going to give you my honest thoughts. You know, the anticipation for Outlaws has been a little mixed before it's even been released, but let me tell you what my impressions were. First of all, Ubisoft in recent years have been making a lot of franchises with the same kind of format. As someone who thought Far Cry 2 was peak Ubisoft back in the day, an open world Star Wars game sounds great, but there's a lot of open worlds these days that don't have a lot in them. Your character operates as a mercenary for hire who has to navigate the reputations of various criminal organizations, complete jobs, and decide who you'll work with and who you're going to betray. You can freely hop from planet to planet, completing these jobs as a larger plot unfolds. It's a big playground, and maybe I should start there by saying this is definitely a very detailed and very much alive Star Wars universe. Honestly, the hustle and bustle of the crowds, the idling of the droids, I'm not sure if there's been a Star Wars game so far that's kind of captured that feeling. As you walk through the cities and shops, you do feel like part of a breathing Star Wars universe. It even behaves a bit like GTA in a lot of ways, on the roads with traffic and citizens trying to pass by with speeder bikes. This also means that immersion is at an all-time high. It honestly feels like they've taken a lot of cues from Red Dead 2 when it comes to just kind of nailing the atmosphere. That feeling combined with the music, the sounds of the world around you, and it might be my favorite aspect of this game. Of course, all that comes with beautiful graphics. Now, the main character and all the major plot characters have all been mo-capped from real actors, which means no, we don't get to customize a character, but we do have very nice high quality models and animations to look at. The design work for the armor and all the gear that the other mercenaries are wearing, the texture work on it, it's all just fantastic. It feels old, but like space age technology, which is Star Wars through and through, and all of the lighting systems across the planets, the buildings, the environments, they're great. It looks beautiful. There are day-night cycles on planets as well, so you have so many different landscapes and so many different ways to view the world. The hundreds of lights that brighten up the cities and the streets and reflect the water, I mean, it all just looks great. When you skim across the open lakes on your speeder, I mean, you can just tell how much love went into building and designing the world itself. So what about some gameplay loops, right? How does this thing actually work? Well, like a lot of Ubisoft games, you get a massive open world map with enemy bases and camps that you can discover, scout with your binoculars, and then loot. You can tag enemies, the whole shebang. But really, it's about how you come across those places in these massive maps you've got to explore. There is always a main quest and a narrative that drives you forward, and interacting with the various criminal factions definitely kind of raises the stakes for what you're going out to do. Here, some fuel injectors for that ship you don't have. These should help you get off Toshara. So you know everything, huh? Just the things that are important to us. You'll be hearing from me soon, so try to stay alive. The reputation systems for those factions is kind of at the heart of the game, really. They all have their own territories, their own buildings you can go and infiltrate. So more from the not, you're usually going to be stepping on someone's toes. But if they're friendly with you, they'll let you just walk right into their base. And there will be moments in the story where you have to decide if you're going to double cross or screw over other factions as they try and kind of play you against each other. There's also a wanted system, so piss off enough people and they'll come chasing after you, even on speeder bikes, which is pretty cool. All this exploring feeds into a loot system that lets you upgrade and craft several different things. Parts for your blaster, upgrades for your speeder bike and design, and of course, your spaceship as well. Now this is all because, as far as I'm aware, you won't be swapping out those things with new items, you're just going to be upgrading them. Which does give you another incentive to hunt for loot. There's loads of different parts all across the world that you're going to try and scavenge and find, and they can be used to build and construct different things. I will say as well, having the little buddy Nyx with you, he can loot things for you, which is super convenient. He can also get to places you can't reach. He can also distract and attack. It's a fun mechanic for sure. You can customize his appearance. I enjoyed having a little buddy. The combat as well I found to be very fluid and also very fun. The blaster fire and the laser effects are super satisfying. There's no bullet sponge enemies or anything but there is a big focus on stealth as well as hacking and solving mini games but here's some combat for you. Hurt 
Like I said, there's hacking that you have to do as well, which is a lot of mini games, which were quite fun to play, but after a while, they might get a bit repetitive. I'm more of a run and gun guy anyway, but sometimes you have that option, but sometimes you don't, and the game kind of falls back on its stealth mechanics a bit like Assassin's Creed does. But once you start putting the combat together, it's very fun, as is the variety of animations when it comes to stuff like melee. There is also a lot of platforming for me, which is okay. You get to see some cool places and locations, but it is never that challenging. And like I said, it is something I feel like I've played in about 10 different games now. You do get to fly your ship though, which was actually way more fun and intuitive than I thought it was going to be. Free roaming and exploring space is also broken up into zones and there's actually a lot to discover out there, giving you two ways of exploring the world and keeping things fresh. I didn't know if I'd enjoy the space part of it, but I loved it. It's a lovely little bit on top. The game also does a good job of introducing you to several characters that you'll be working with and taking missions from. And like I said, it's up to you to betray them or fulfill your job. And because they're all kind of different characters and unique in their own ways, it adds a bit more decision making to it. You know, you might just have a preference for someone or you might just hate someone else. You know, you get to work out who you want to work for. Name's Donka. I'm a broker for every job on this moon. Hey, this is legitimate business. Miragana is special, kid. Empire keeps this cantina neutral. Balancing the reputations between all the factions is something that is definitely not going to be easy and will lead to changes in the story and how everything plays out. So overall, what do we think? Well, I have to be honest here and say I didn't have high expectations when I booted up the game. But as a Star Wars fan, Outlaws really does provide an immersive open world sandbox that I do think is way more detailed than any Star Wars game I've ever played. If you want to just be in the Star Wars world, well, so much love has gone into recreating it that in Outlaws, it's impossible not to appreciate it. I mean, if modders get their hands on this thing and you can download a custom character or a Mandalorian to play, I mean, it might be a completely different game. But, you know, you don't get a lightsaber. You don't get to create your own character. And at its core, it's a stealth platforming game. And that might not be your bag. If you play games for the storyline with great characters and locations, then yeah, I think that this game has got a lot for you to enjoy. Now, I didn't get to the end of the story, but the people I met along the way were fun, and there's definitely going to be a lot of classic Star Wars going on. But if you're all about gameplay loops, well, it's not too different from the core elements of what Assassin's Creed asks you to do, or even Far Cry, liberate bases, manage reputations, unlock new areas. Overall, I'm going to give Outlaws a 7.5. Now, that score might be higher for you if you vibe more with the stealth gameplay, maybe you feel a stronger connection to the main character, or maybe you've always wanted to play a mercenary in the Star Wars universe, and now's your chance. The best part of the game for me is the visuals, the immersive world that absorbs you and, you know, getting to pilot a speeder, a spaceship, and just having a massive Star Wars sandbox to play in. There you go, there are my thoughts. I think I covered pretty much everything. If you've got any questions, guys, please ask me down below and let me know if you'll be picking up Star Wars Outlaws. See you in the next one, guys.